So in order to convey spatial auditory information, spatial acoustic information to a user, we need to create intraoral time differences and we need to impose spectral cues, elevation cues, onto a signal that we play to the user. So why not do this straight ahead and record the signals that arise at the ear of a user? That is, of course, a little inconvenient because um, the uh, user would have to wear uh, microphones in the ears. Um, but um, it is, there's a convenient uh, compromise, which is called dummy head or mannequin. These are basically anth anthropometric uh, copies of the human body. So they are life size. Here's a picture of one of them. And they include all the details um, that are important for um, a signal that reaches the eardrum of a listener. <coughs> and of course, these, um, these mannequins, they don't have ears, but they have microphones at those locations where human uh, where, uh, humans have the entrances of their ear canal. So these basically record the ear signals directly um, due to a sound scene that can be any complex scene. It doesn't need to be just a single sound source. It can be anything and there can be dynamic changes. The sound sources may move, etc. And these record the ear signals directly. And if we then play back these signals through headphones directly into the um, ear canals of the user, then the user is provided with all these acoustic cues that um, were created by the anthropometry of the dummy head. And if the anthropometry of the dummy head is similar enough to the anthropometry of the user, then the user will, uh, the user's auditory system will recognize all these acoustic cues and will hear the spatial sound scene. So, for example, if the dummy head recorded the sound, uh, the signals that arose at its ears due to a sound source, slightly elevated, slightly uh, lateral, then a user who listens to the recorded signals through headphones will, will localize a sound source, will hear a sound source at this same location. The upside of this um, approach is that it's straightforward, so you don't need any complicated uh, arrangement. Of course, it's a little bulky, but there's no processing uh, required um, or the like. The downside is that there is no dynamic cues contained in these signals. So that means if the user turns the head upon playback, the entire scene will turn with the user. So you're losing a lot of spatial fidelity through this. And of course, there's, it's not as easy for the user to resolve front and rear, for example, because the head orientations are not taken into account. Still, it can be very impressive and a very well-known um, example um, of a dummy head recording um, is termed the virtual haircut. You can find it, for example, on YouTube through this link. Uh, but please be sure. Uh, so this is a, a recording of a dummy head um, and it's neatly done. Um, it's a virtual uh, barber shop and that you're experiencing a, a haircut that you're getting in a virtual barber shop. And uh, there will be a narration, there's music, there's background noises, noise. So you will get all, um, you will get a lot of information but please be sure that you're wearing headphones when you're listening through it. Because if you listen through these signals, through, through for example, loudspeakers in a room, the loudspeakers will not play the signal directly into your ear, but um, the signal will reach both ears so that there will be crosstalk uh, apparent. And this changes the interaural cues so that you, will, you might perceive something totally different compared to the case when you're consuming the content over headphones. So what can we do in order to integrate had, uh, to, to take the uh, uh, head rotations of the user into account. Well, first of all, we can measure these head-related transfer functions. Um, for example, for many, many locations around the user, so this is done as follows, a user, or in this case, a dummy head, is uh, sat into an anechoic chamber, um, because one would usually not want to um, measure the acoustic cues of a room, um, of a specific room. One wants to do this in free field to capture only the acoustic uh, properties of the body. And then there will be loudspeakers, for example. Um, uh, in this case, there are loudspeakers distributed over this arc, and they will play sounds, a specific measurement signal that will be captured by the ears, either inside the ears of the small microphones, inside the ears of a person, or at the, uh, by the microphones inside the ears of the dummy head that allow to compute the transfer function from that loudspeaker position to the, to the ear of uh, the mannequin or the person. And this will be performed for each of those loudspeakers 
in this case it is uh, several dozens of loudspeakers, and then either the arc will rotate to a new angle or the, the, the user or the dummy head will rotate slightly, and then the same procedure is repeated to cover all possible angles around uh, the user as it is indicated in this graph. So each of these marks inside this three-dimensional space corresponds to a measured loudspeaker position. So this tells us, this allows us to measure all the transfer paths from source directions to the user. So if we then use a software that can impose these transfer functions onto a signal, for example, a signal that we record with a microphone, um, like my speech or a music signal, if we're filtering this signal through uh, with the data that um, we have measured previously, then we are imposing all the acoustic cues, so the interaural timing difference uh, differences and the spectral difference differences uh, onto that source signal, so for example my voice, and the user will then localize, will hear the signal at uh, the location um, that corresponded to the, uh, where the loudspeaker was um, in, the, in the measurement. So this would allow us to compose a sound scene of virtual sources, like it is the case here in the center. This uh, indicates, this little object indicates the user, and the other objects are virtual sound sources in this uh, scene, so they all have a position associated to it. This can also look differently, like in a uh, game engine, for example, when you're composing um, three-dimensional content, um, you have this kind of uh, editor where you can add objects to the scenario and each object of course has a location and you can assign a sound to each of these objects and then you need a, an audio engine that, uh, that picks the right set of measured head-related transfer functions for a corresponding sound source position relative to the instantaneous orientation of the listener and then it needs to, it, it imposes um, it filters the source signals, like microphone signals uh, or other recorded signals, um, with the corresponding set of head-related transfer function of HRTFs. One terms this binaural audio reproduction. The term binaural uh, refers to the fact that we're listening with both ears, and it has it has it's established the established term for this kind of reproduction. Now, uh, we still don't have any. Uh, 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 we're still not taking into account the uh, uh, movements of the listener up on playback. So this technically does not is not very much different from a dummy head recording. But since we have all the source signals um, independent of each other, um, we can actually mount the uh, equip the headphones of the user with a sensor that measures the instantaneous orientation. And then we can take the orientation, the instantaneous orientation of the user into account and adapt the processing, the, 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 the selection of head-related transfer functions such that even if the user moves the head, the sound source stays stable in space. This is indicated in this video. If you see, if this is the head tracker and you can see that the, the, the movements of this pair of headphones are directly translated um, onto the user in this scenario. So, and the sound sources, they are not moving inside the virtual scene, uh, which means uh, that if the user consumes this content with head tracking, then the sound sources are stable in space and uh, the human auditory system can make use of um, the, uh, all the dynamic cues inside the signals so that the spatial fidelity is much higher than what you can achieve um, uh, with a dummy head recording where no head tracking uh, is incorporated.